Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Aptitude Club. Uh, today in this video, we'll be discussing a very interesting question uh, on infinite thirds. You must have seen these kind of questions uh, like being asked in different exams. And uh, this is one particular question from a previous CAT exam. And uh, very easy uh, to uh, like calculate the answer of this question. So I'll take it up in two ways. Uh, first method that I'll be discussing is how to approach these kind of questions in general and uh, then afterwards I'll introduce you to a shortcut which will help you answer this question in five seconds or even lesser than that. So stay tuned and watch the video till the end so that you get to know what the shortcut is. Uh, at the end of the video I'll also post two questions as homework and you can let me know your answers uh, in the comment section uh, if you have understood what we will. Uh, go through in this video section. Now, if you are watching this video for the first time, uh, welcome you all to my channel. And uh, this channel is dedicated uh, for quantitative aptitude, logical reasoning, data interpretation, exam preparation, predominantly for CAT and uh, maths in general. We'll be discussing uh, such topics uh, in this. So, I'll be taking you through these various areas uh, through my videos. So do subscribe uh, if you like my way of explaining and teaching, and if you find uh, the content useful do subscribe to the aptitude club channel and without further delay let us uh, begin the discussion so first what's the normal process of solving this so if i take up the question in this way let us say let x be the value of this we have been given square root of 6 plus square root of 6 plus square root of 6 and this goes on till infinity. Let us say x is equal to this thing. Now, this is one part of infinite series. I had already done uh, one session on infinite series uh, Ramanujan's uh, equation or uh, Ramanujan series uh, and uh, Grandis series uh, uh, combined. Uh, I had explained how 1 plus 2 plus 3 till infinity is minus 1 by 12. So, I will pin it in the I section. You can watch that video. But that gives you a clue how does infinite series work. Now, we will follow something similar here. Now, if I start looking from this point, this thing also again looks like x only, square root of 6 plus square root of 6 plus square root of 6 uh, till infinity. So basically, like if I take away one unit from infinity, it doesn't make any difference. So I can simply rewrite this equation in this way. So it is x is square root of 6 plus the rest of the part now becomes x. Now, what you need to do is just simple squaring both sides. The squaring both sides, I will get x square is equal to 6 plus x. So, you will get x square minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. I can factorize this middle term factorization if you use here. So, I will write it as x square minus 3x plus 2x minus 6 is equal to 0. So, this gives me x common x minus 3 plus 2 common x minus 3 is equal to 0 or you will get x minus 3 into x plus 2 is equal to 0 which gives you two values of x either x is 3 or minus 2. Now we will go with the conventional value that is x is equal to 3 and not minus 2 provided x is a positive real number we will go with the positive square root x is equal to 3 that is the answer. Make sense? Very simple process. Very simple process. Just substitute the rest of the part as x and then squaring both sides. We followed uh, this and we'll get a quadratic polynomial in uh, general. Find the roots. I could middle term factorize here. Not every time you can uh, use middle term factorization. Wherever you can't uh, use middle term factorization. So, in that case, you can calculate in this way. Roots will be given by the formula minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. I can use this. So, this is one general method. Let me take some more examples so that you can understand it in a better way. Let us say we will go with another example. Example 2. It can be any number. Okay, It can be any number. Suppose I will say, let us say x is equal to square root of 24 plus square root of 24 plus square root of 24 and so on till infinity. So, one unit of 24 you will keep it and the rest of it you can again take this as x 
and now just substituting that in the original uh, value equation mein. so x is equal to square root of 24 plus x now that's the reason i am taking multiple examples i am uh, pretty sure all of you are very clear on the first example but uh, if i do two three more examples only then you will be able to relate to the shortcut now again squaring both sides I'll get x square is equal to 24 plus x. So x square minus x minus 24 is equal to 0. Now this is something that cannot be factorized easily. Middle term factorization there can be done. So I'll go with the formula of finding the roots. So x is equal to minus b minus of minus 1 plus or minus b square. So minus 1 square minus 4 into a is 1 c is minus 24 this equation is of the form ax square plus bx plus c so accordingly just substitute the values divided by 2a which is 2 into 1 so i get x is equal to 1 plus or minus square root of 97 divided by 2 so you will go with the positive real number value hence x is equal to 1 plus square root of 97 by 2 i'll go with this answer now this is not an integer unlike the previous case and as a necessity hai nahi ki that always my answer has to be an integer so this is the general approach of solving such questions now the same uh, type of question can be given with a minus sign also given with a minus sign also how let me take another example suppose i'll say x is like this square root of 15 minus square root of 15 minus square root of 15 minus square root of 15 and so on till infinity now this is going on in a minus sign again similar thing from this point starting i can take this as x so if you substitute that here i'll get x is square root of 15 minus x just the minus sign everything else remains the same so squaring both sides i'll get x square is equal to 15 minus x so you get x square plus x minus 15 is equal to 0 again can't be middle term factorized so you calculate the value of x in this way x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus b square is 1 square minus 4 into 1 into minus 15 divided by 2 into 1 or x is minus 1 plus or minus square root of this is like 60 61 divided by 2 so we'll go with the positive real number value again and x is equal to minus 1 plus square root of 60 divided by 2 this is our answer so we have taken up three examples and we saw how these questions can be solved very simple process one unit and beyond that everything is again coming as x squaring both sides and you solve now if you look at this why could i middle term factorize the first term and not the other two questions here i could middle term factorize because this number six i can write it as three into two and because the coefficient here is one okay coefficient here is one and you notice the coefficient here is one in every case yahan pe bhi one hai. Here also it is 1. Now, minus 1 in basically these two cases. Uh, ignoring the sign, the coefficient is 1 or minus 1. That means I need to break the constant term in a way where it can come as product of two consecutive terms. Wherever I can get the constant as product of two consecutive numbers, only then I can express it as 1 or minus 1. The sum. This will be the sum and this is the product. So whichever product can be expressed as product of two consecutive numbers, that product can be middle, uh, like that expression can be middle term factorized. I hope you are getting my point. Here 6, I could write as 3 into 2. So if I need a minus 1, so I could, I'll write minus 3 plus 2. If I would need a plus 1, I'll write plus 3 minus 2. But in the second case, 24, you cannot write it as product of two consecutive integers. Maybe I'll write it as 4 into 6 or 8 into 3 or 2 into 12 but in none of the cases you see the sum cannot be 1 or minus 1 for the two terms because they cannot uh, uh, we cannot express 24 
as product of two consecutive integers. So that is why you cannot middle term factorize. And usiliye tumara answer aisa one plus root ninety seven by two integer mein niya ra aisa. Same goes with fifteen also. You cannot express as fifteen uh, the number fifteen. You cannot express as product of two consecutive integers. So wherever you can, that is where the shortcut comes into place. I am not saying shortcut can be applied to every question. So wherever you cannot use the shortcut, you will go by the normal process. And I am sure all of you have understood what the normal process is. Very simple. But the shortcut is if any number n, where n can be expressed as a into b, where a and b are consecutive integers. This is very important. A or b are consecutive integers. And if they are consecutive, one number will be greater than the other number will be smaller. Let us say a is greater than b. Then if the expression is given in this way, square root of n, square root of n, square root of n plus m till infinity, then the answer is directly a. And if it is given in minus, then the answer is directly b. Quite simple. Quite simple. Just you are try and break the number as product of two consecutive integers if it can be. And then if plus me diya hai, the answer is the greater integer. Minus me diya to lesser integer. For example, the first question that we took up, if I'll have to solve it using shortcut, the question square root of six plus square root of six plus square root of six till infinity. So here the number given to us is n equal to six. So when you see the question, you will see okay, n is equal to six. Which can be written as three into two, where three and two are consecutive integers, and three is greater than two. Hence, the answer to this is the greater integer, that is three. Direct, no solving needed. We had got three answer here also in the first question. We got the answer as three. You can directly write it as three in two three seconds just by looking at the number. If it is given in plus, answer is the greater integer. If it will be given in minus, the answer will be the smaller integer, provided the number can be expressed as product of two consecutive integers. Now the same question, if I give it in minus, let us say. So suppose it is given in this way: square root of six minus square root of six minus square root of six, so on till infinity. So again, in this case. Answer here will be the smaller integer that is two, because n is three into two consecutive integers. Three is greater than two because we have a minus sign here. So I'll go with the smaller integer. When you have a plus sign, we'll go with the larger integer. Very simple. You can answer it in seconds. Just like look at the question and write the answer. It is as simple as that. And this exact question came in the past. So, so easy. So easy. And even if you cannot write it as product of two consecutive integers. The normal process, as such, is not that difficult. I just substitute x, squaring both sides, you'll get a quadratic. Solve the quadratic problem. All right. So these two questions I am uh, giving you to try it out, and uh, very easy, very easy. If you have understood uh, what we have discussed in the video, you can answer this in seconds. Do let me know your answer in the comment section. Okay, definitely write your answers and share your views about the video in the comment section for these two questions. And if you have watched the video so far. Do uh, like subscribe to the Aptitude Club channel and hit the bell icon so that you stay updated uh, about my upcoming videos. I try and update videos regularly every day so that you get some content uh, related to your preparation and it will help you in your uh, learning uh, process. So do subscribe and uh, share it with your friends as well. We'll meet again very soon in yet another video. Till then, keep solving, keep studying, and bye bye.